plate to potential nugget. And actually, the one of the stories in the book uh, uh, really uh, appealed to me. Uh, thanks to my father, I'm a big fan of the Beatles. And <laughs> song, I, I also learned the instrument. I play the guitar and I was learning the song yesterday a while back. And, uh, you know, it's a song that's been voted as one of the uh, greatest songs ever, right? Number one pop song of all time by MTV and Rolling Stones and so on. And I also couldn't help notice the connection uh, that you're from Liverpool, <laughs> um, so, so tell us a story of uh, how, uh, you know, the link between the song Yesterday and Sleeping. So at the time, Paul McCartney was actually down in London. He was staying at a residence on Wimpole Street in London, and he was um, uh, filming uh, a movie down there. And he recalls that um, in his bedroom, he actually had a small upright piano in the corner and he woke up one morning with this beautiful tune, this beautiful melody in his uh, his mind, and he immediately understood the chords and the progression of those chords. And he went straight over to the piano and started playing them, and he penned down this music. And he thought, this is just beautiful. It's so lovely, this progression that you know of from yesterday. And he thought, where have I heard this before? I, I, I don't recognize it, but it must be from someone else. And the more he thought about it, the more he realized that, in fact, it wasn't a tune that he'd heard. It had been um, a set of music that had been gifted to him in his sleep. Um, and it was that chord progression. It wasn't the lyrics there, but it was the chord progression. Um, the other song that is fantastic, uh, also one of the highest rated uh, Beatles songs, is um, uh, is Hey Jude. Um, and... You know, in that, there is a description uh, that says, you know, Mother Mary, uh, in my hour of darkness, um, Mother Mary comes to me speaking words of wisdom. Uh, sorry, let it be. Yeah. I'm sorry, not hey, Jude, let it be. And uh, Paul McCartney describes that that was actually inspired by a dream. And there's been suggestions that Mother Mary would, you know, the religious overtones that it could be um, Mary Magdalena. But it's actually not. It's his mother. Um, his mother was called Mary, Mary McCartney. And mm -hmm. he had a dream one night when he was struggling with his professional career. And his mother came to him and just said, you know, don't worry, continue what you're doing. Everything will be fine. Just Paul, let it be. And uh, that's why the, the lyrics are described that, that in his hour of darkness, Mother Mary, his mother, Mary, uh, comes to him speaking words of wisdom, let it be. And so uh, a beautiful inspiration, sleep-inspired creativity. And we see that lots in artists and scientists as well. Wow. And just maybe sticking to that theme, uh, Matt, in terms of learning an instrument, in the book you also talk, talk about research around the criticality of sleep before and after you don't learn an instrument. So to make it tactical, any for somebody learning an instrument, whether it's the piano or the guitar or the drums, any any tactical inputs on how they should think about sleep in the context of uh, building muscle memory? So we've done a, a lot of work in this area, and it's uh, a topic that we call motor skill memory or motor skill learning. And it's applicable for learning a musical instrument, as you described, but it's also applicable for other areas, um, learning a new sport, um, flying a plane, uh, doctors with surgical procedures. These are all critical, complex motor skills. And what we've discovered uh, from a highline sort of headline perspective is that practice does not make perfect, despite uh, that phrase being uh, offered to us. In fact, it's practice with a night of sleep that makes perfect. Because what we discovered is that when you practice, you do learn and you do improve. But what we also learned is that once you stop practicing, the brain actually will continue to learn in the absence of any further practice. However, that delayed learning, that offline learning, occurs exclusively during periods of sleep and not across equivalent time periods whilst you're awake. Um, so it isn't quite practice that makes perfect. As I said, it's practice with a night of sleep that ultimately seems to lead to motor skill perfection. Hmm. And is there maybe just uh, another question on this before we move forward? Anything to do with the timing of sleep and learning an instrument? Is there some uh, research that talks about let's say, a certain time window within which, you know, you, you fall to sleep after you learn an instrument or vice versa. Is there, has there been any study around that? 
There has, and we've done some of this work and others have contributed to it as well. We seem to see a stronger association with sleep uh, in the last couple of hours of your night. So for these types of motor skill memories, we've been finding that it's a lighter form of non-dreaming sleep, what we call stage two non-REM sleep. And particularly these remarkable electrical bursts of um, activity that occur during stage two non-REM sleep called sleep spindles. And the, the greater the amount of that sleep that you have in the last two hours, and the greater the amount of these sleep spindles during that stage in the last, for example, quarter of your night, that seemed to most accurately predict the degree of improvement, both in your speed of performance, as well as your accuracy of performance. Thank you for listening. If you're finding this conversation purposeful, you might also like to tune into my conversation with Matt Dixon, a triathlon coach in Silicon Valley, who specifically speaks about the role of rest and recovery when you train for triathlons. If you're deriving value from the podcast, please consider paying it forward to Antarang Foundation, an organization I work with closely. Antarang is a not-for-profit that works with thousands of young adults and helps them play to their unique potential. While the world of human potential, I believe, is uniformly distributed, the world of opportunity is unfortunately quite unevenly distributed. We may not realize it, or even want to acknowledge it, but the reality is that a lot of us are beneficiaries of the ovarian lottery, a term that Warren Buffett uses, that sets us up very differently. To know more about how you can make a difference, do visit the paid forward section at playtopotential.com.